How you guys doing? We're going over the entire Martinsville weekend because there's a lot of racing to be had. We got trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday. We got F1 in Japan, uh, midnight my time, Sunday morning. And then we got the Cup Series on, on Sunday. And so figured I would just do one big one covering everything. We'll go Cup Series first, then Xfinity, then the Truck Series. And that'll be uh, how we're at. I have no idea how long it's going to be. But as we go ahead and look at this, we're looking at Richmond. And as I said... Some people have asked me to not delete these off of the screen from the old ones as I move on, but I will at least move sideways to where we'll start moving them off the screen. And so looking at the recent form, this is where everybody is coming in at. Actually, for this, actually, I am going to remove these. I'll put them back after this, but I mainly just want these. Uh, I just want the recent races here. So who has been on top here recently as we look at the short tracks that the Cup Series has been at. We're clearly seeing two uh, dominant teams, and really it's been it's been taken over uh, by the Joe Gibbs Racing Stable. Uh, when you look at specifically where those drivers are at this year, uh, I went ahead and uh, when I'm looking at my stuff, I got Bell as the sixth best driver last week as he drove through the field, as he drove through the field, and he most likely would have been competing to win the race if he had not spun uh, or sped on pit lane. Uh, and he had to do a pass through and still drove back up through the field and, and finished very well. Um, other things to note at Richmond was that McDowell, uh, th at, least we, at least we're somewhat accurate about this, of, of Martin Trix and them wanting to, to get the lead and, and use pit strategy from that. McDowell also did that. He got caught um, being trapped two laps down, and uh, that's why if you look back at how the scoring went, you saw McDowell with a ton of fast laps because he was off sequence. Uh, with the rest of the field and he got trapped lap down but he also at least in my opinion I think he was uh, he actually had a pretty decent car uh, in 25th but when you're looking at the lap by lap stuff and you see him one lap down it's going to show that um, you know McDowell ended up being like a 30 but he was the 30th best driver uh, which no lie he was at the start of the race but they did make improvements uh, quite a lot of improvements uh, in that stable but we see Christopher Bell uh, we see Martin Trix Jr up there we see Denny Hamlin up there I mean it's it's I mean you're seeing a pretty pretty good uh, mirror of, of how these guys are doing specifically Truex Hamlin um, we're seeing like Logano you know showed up and uh, at least for his price I want to talk about pricing really fast not this week's pricing because like look for me pricing doesn't matter until we have projections that's the only time it matters I'm assuming like I haven't even bothered looking at it yet but, I mean, we can look at it together. Uh, I don't foresee pricing dictating who we can or cannot play. I think that is uh, at least my view. I don't know if that's a very wise thing to do here. But when we're looking specifically, hey, look at that. Ty Gibbs already got down to 8K. Uh, what was very interesting this past weekend was, let's uh, let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and bring up the ownership for this last race, which was very, very shocking indeed. So when we look at where the ownership fell last weekend, you know, clearly Truex, you know, Bell was up there. And even more so, we saw that Truex and Bell, <clears throat> excuse me, like, I thought Truex would have come in higher own compared. Like, I understand that Bell is going to show as the better play due to the place differential, due to the fact that he's safer and stuff. But Truex at 30% was quite shocking. Hamlin at 22 that's that's wild. Gibbs, I knew it was at ten thousand, but sixteen after the last two weeks of people playing this guy left and right. And then, guys, guys, holy Jesus, what are we doing here? We we cannot have William Byron at ten thousand dollars. What is with this? What's with this play? Honest to God, question here. Talking ownership, talking the future of like how to play this stuff. Why was Byron consistently last year? Lesser owned than Kyle Larson when Byron ended up having the better year DFS wise, ran away with more races, or was an identical play to Larson. Why was Byron why is he not being played? What do you guys <clears throat> what does the public have against him? Hold on, give me a second. Sure, I mean you can categorize this as game theory or, you know, approach or when to get different and stuff, but there's absolutely no reason, especially if the field because this is the big GPP field. There's no reason to not play William Byron, to not play Ty Gibbs each week. I just I just don't understand that at all. So like when we're looking at this weekend 
at Martinsville. We're going to kind of go down. Let's, well, I mean, fuck it. You know what? Let's bring up the salaries because people like doing that. Hold on. Give me a second. Now, as I said, I don't look at this by, you know, let's enter and like, if anything, I pay more. I, I, I care more about what the public is doing. Now, I understand this is coming off of um, Richmond and it's important to do this week by week and especially like race by race, like track type by track type, because you're going to see that, you know, yet again, we're leaving Richmond. The exact same people who competed last week at Richmond are going to compete this weekend in Martinsville. And then when we, when we enter Texas, Dover, Kansas, the month of May, the people that do well at Texas next week are going to be the same people you want to play at Dover and are going to be the same people you want to play for the month of May. Okay, so if the field doesn't want to play people at Dover, doesn't want to play people at Texas, not only should you be playing, like, you know, you should be playing the guys who aren't owned anyway, but if we see drivers un- under own two weeks in a row, you just got to fucking steamroll them the rest of the month of May, straight up. Um, so, like, leaving Richmond, the same people, I'm not saying that, like, you know, we're going to have Truex run away, we're going to have Larson run away, but, like, at Martinsville, it's it's Hendrick and it's Joe Gibbs. Those are the drivers who are going to be here. Who was under owned in that range? Who was under owned between those two drivers here? William Byron. Why? What? That makes no sense at all. At ten percent, his his percentage of actually being optimal was much closer to 15, 16, 17 percent in all the races last weekend. Under his ownership was way under what he actually should have been owned at. I just don't understand why. Uh, ownership is so soft on some of these people. Like it happened last year and I was like, just fucking play Byron again. Same thing. As we look at this, like, you know, you're going to notice, you know, clear as I, you know, as we already talk, like, well, well, Hamlin's the most expensive. We had no shit. Hamlin's the most expensive. Oh man. Kyle Larson second. Yeah. No, no duh. A lot of that lines up with where they're at. You know, Oh my God. Truex is up there. Yeah, of course. Like Blaney here. You know, we saw Blaney and, and Logano certainly take a step up last weekend at, at Richmond, but in terms of DFS and stuff, like, you know, I want to see more, at least for me. Like, w- this was very similar to what we've been seeing Blaney do at these racetracks anyway, at this rate, like he's right there, but he hasn't been playable in DFS, you know. Once we view this and view where he's at, yeah, I understand why he's the fourth most expensive, but, you know, then the secondary part of that is what does he need to do to pay this off? He needs to, he needs to run a Lucas race. He needs to lead quite a lot of laps. That's the one thing. Can can Blaney lead a ton of laps? Or can he offer place differential to even pay that off? Like, that's that's the only thing. That's like, yet again, can't answer that because we don't, we don't have projections. Bell has been uh, in, incredibly impressive as of late. Um, coming off of two races that we could argue that he is the best car. Um, outside of, like I said, outside of his speeding penalty, Last weekend, he's most likely the third best car. Um, this was just him having to drive through the field and practically pass everybody. Um, again, when we look at William Byron here yet again, now he's cheaper this this week. He was ten thousand dollars last weekend, or ten five, my bad, ten five. Started thirteenth, finished seventh, four fast laps, forty five points. Yet again, when we're looking at where he's at, and I understand that we have several of his races outside the top ten in the past or last year his recent races he has been basically where he's lining up um as the you know ninth and tenth best driver yet again he finishes better than or he finished better than where he started because he had the late race restart <clears throat> we had drivers you know really really screwed the pooch on uh, the last pit stop and stuff that gave byron more positions but still you're telling me william byron who like the defending nascar cup series champion what are we doing blaney won the champ. Let's come on, people. Really, Blaney won the championship last year. You fucking get this. Byron, who won the championship last year, had a dominant car last year where this was his worst races. Like his short track package, that was the worst place for William Byron last year. He was the top three car at the intermediates last year, or four or five, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll bring that up when we get to Texas next week. Um, but like, you're going to tell me that like the fucking public doesn't want to play. Byron, that's insane. Now, you might argue yet again, oh, Brent, he didn't pay off. He didn't, he only scored 45 points last weekend. But those are situations where you need to be playing William Byron. You need to be playing Ty Gibbs, you know. Wasn't crazy on him, but, I mean, look at Logano from last weekend moving up from a uh, a price tag last week of $8,400, clearly a misprice, you know, in a situation where he starts 10th, finishes 2nd. 
the 25 fastest laps is not an anomaly because, you know, track sequences, pit sequences, and stuff like that. But, like, come on, man. This Price Lacano, what are we doing? So, like, you know, look at where Lagano ended up being 25. And that's another thing. Hell, you know, centralized ownership is being this year. And when, at least when I look at it this year, I feel like the top four. Week in and week out, and I don't have them. I mean, I guess we can. Let me go back and look through real fast. Give me a second. All right, now I'm just kind of digging around, so I, I might be wrong here. Last week at Richmond, this is Coda, Bristol, and Las Vegas, if I am correct here. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the Las Vegas race. And as we're just looking through where this ownership ends up coming out in and yet again this is ranked by uh you know sorted by percentage ownership these are more so looking at the adjusted um ownership of sheets is projected ownership and what the percent was drafted and these are really really difficult um you know unfortunate miss with bowman but these have been very very close for the majority of them uh, anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up is when we look specifically at, like, let's go back and look at Larson compared to Byron, just straight up. You could argue that, like, you know, starting position and everything is, um, you know, a big deal of what the projected ownership would be. But when you're looking at what the field is doing, like, yet again, we just came off of everybody playing Ty Gibbs, uh, Byron right at 20, Larson at 29. Um, when we look at Bristol, you know, you see, you know, yet again, everybody's wanting to play at least not everybody, but like a majority of people still wanted to play Ty Gibbs. We see, uh, we see where's where's Larson at. We see Larson yet again at 26. We see the identical play of William Byron in terms of what he's able to do. Not even owned. We look at Las Vegas, which yet again Byron has a fantastic car, and the overheating issue with the trash bag and the beer can ends his day, and he still performs well. And we see just a gigantic discrepancy between the field that drafts Byron and the field that drafts Larson when they are literally the same exact play, you know. And so yet again, when we're entering Martinsville, if you are interested in Larson, Byron is here. Uh, it, it, it just makes like no sense to or it makes no sense of why. Byron has not been played. I just don't understand what's going on here. And so yet again, I'm just going to keep lying money on fire playing Byron because nobody's going to want to, nobody's doing that. Uh, anyways, we continue going along. That's where Logano is. Uh, we see you get a price bump. We see Keselowski right out to where he's at. We're going to have to see where he falls in line at. The Gibbs was certainly disappointing last weekend, but disappointing because I want to play him when nobody's playing him. Certainly not disappointing when we're looking at, and you might be like, oh, he's trying to get a way out of here. But, like, he's literally right where he is. Like, this is right where Ty Gibbs is at um, outside of, you know, the run at Phoenix, which was, you know, Richmond. I've been trying to figure out what exactly happened with Ty Gibbs. You know, yet again, we started this race in the rain. Like, dude, a lot of people are just bitching and moaning about this Richmond race, man. I have no complaints. Who, who cares they start in the wet? You want them to wait? Who cares if they burn caution laps off? Who cares? You know, if you had Larson, bro, you were like, man, just just keep just keep counting the laps. Who gives a shit? Like, who gives a fuck, man? The only reason you would be mad that they're counting caution laps is if you don't have Larson. That's the only argument I would I would listen to. Like, who who cares? And so, you know, Gibbs fell back on the start. You know, ended up running right in the uh, the low teens all day uh, last weekend, rather, and just got stuck running here. I, I you know. Pit stops were fine. Nothing, nothing too crazy on 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 pit lane. Just wasn't able to get the track position and stuff. And when you look at the people that he was out running, yeah, he was out running people that ran, or that started around him, or that started up front. But then we also had people like, you know, Barry, uh, Keselowski, Reddick, Gregson. A lot of these guys came up through the field, passed him yet again, pushed I gives a lap down, or not a lap down, but pushed him down the uh, the running order. And yeah, I mean, it's it it is. My opinion, you know, that's uh, certainly, you know, a time where it's like, well, duh, you shouldn't have played Ty Gibbs. But, uh, dude, I'm going to go back to the well, man. I'm going to go back to it, uh, especially on, after, right after, right off of a race where he underperformed. <laughs> he needs 45 points. Like, come on, man. Are you kidding me? We don't want to play Ty Gibbs? What are we doing? 
Elliot sucks. What else is there to say? Uh, right where right where he falls in the line at. Right where he's at. You know, Chris Busher. You know, say, same thing with like Elliot. Like I know the Run Pure guys. I I it may have been Coda. I'll be frank. I didn't listen to a lot of stuff last weekend at Richmond, uh, just because I didn't play a lot. But the Run Pure guys had been kind of the same thing. That I'm saying with with Byron and and Gibbs, they've been chasing you know Elliot for a while here. And I mean, I think it's warranted. You know, I just said that he sucks, and he fucking does. Dude, Chase Elliott sucks. Chase Elliott fans suck. He's the most annoying guy in, in in the field. Like, thank God he's on a losing streak. Like that is just music to my ears. I don't want everyone. With, I don't want to ever see this guy win again. But um, like, dude, same thing. Like Chase Elliott, eighty eight hundred. If we if we like Larson, okay, because we go everybody goes goo goo gaga over White Powell Larson, man. They everybody just loves Larson, okay. We're not giving the love to William Byron, you know, despite the fact he's an identical play. We liked, or we can understand that we, let's check where Bowman's lying at. that. Where's Bowman at? Bowman's clearly the fourth Hendrick car, you know, right under $8,000 in a situation where, depending on where he's at, he could very easily hit value and, and go over that. Why aren't we playing? Why aren't we? Where? Okay, let's see. Let's check it out. Where has Elliot's ownership been? Has anybody even been playing Elliot recently? You know, 13. Uh, we look back at whatever the hell this race was. Yet again, I forgot. Uh, we're looking at Elliot. 16. Let's see. I believe this is Bristol. We're looking at Elliot. I, I just missed him. Had to miss him. Had to miss him. I'm either missed him or I'm, or I'm just blind. I'm blind. Oh, 33. So a lot of people played him at Bristol. And were they rewarded or were they taken behind the shed and shot? Uh, 37 points at 83. I'm going to assume this is Bristol. Don't remember. But uh, looking at the prices, he's not scored very well since uh, Atlanta with 44 points. So I'm assuming that that was a uh, rather annoying bust for some people at, at Las Vegas. At the Pins Oil 400, he scores 30 points, and he is drafted 11%. So, you know, yet again, you know, so we're seeing Byron, Ty Gibbs, Chase Elliott as people who um, haven't been um, been drafted a lot. Um, we're seeing these guys, you know, be, be uh, I just went blank. What was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Oh, like, you know, like these guys aren't being played by the field and by people. So, you know, these are people, drivers rather, uh, that I would want to start playing more of, that I want to like start, you know, having ownership to, especially if the field has really solidified that they're just not going to play them. Uh, and we haven't necessarily seen, you know, a ton of reasons to, like go crazy over Elliot. But like, I mean, look, man, when we're looking at these races, you you don't you don't just go from an 18th to winning races, you know you you go from being you know a 10th place car, to possibly having a good run, good, you know, not series, good uh, good run in a race or whatever. Get in the top five, and then you use pit road strategy. You get the lead that way. Like Elliot is. An individual, same thing with Byron, same thing with Gibbs, of where they're running, they are in positions that they can take advantage of late race chaos, of pit strategy, of even just where the cautions fall to leapfrog people and finish well. Like, this is the situation where, like, yeah, like, I, I want to play more of these guys that aren't being owned as much, especially, that was my point that I was going to make up earlier when I put up the, uh, the ownership. We're seeing... That we have four, which I have to look back at last year and the year before. Truck and Xfinity isn't really comparable because, like, in the truck series, like, the most owned guy is, is usually, like, the best play. Like, we've seen, you know, Ben Rhodes, like, 75% recently. We've seen other people in the 60s and 70s in Truck and Xfinity, but for good reason. But for the Cup series, we're seeing a pretty big, you know, uh, grouping of like the top three to four ownerships up top and then just it's just spread out like there is nothing going on from like fifth sixth highest ownership down like it's just 10 percent across the board practically 
Um, and so like when I see that, I'm much more interested in, in probably playing, you know, certainly more chalk or like, you know, drilling in on, on the good plays and stuff and like three of my positions. And the other three in my lineup, I don't get to really worry about duplication. I don't really worry or I'm not going to really worry about the ownership of the other three guys, you know, especially if it's landing on people that the field isn't playing. And I'm high, kind of highlighting here that we're kind of seeing that has been played recently. I mean, that's that's kind of what I want to do, especially as we enter the 1.5s, you know. I know this is a Martinsville preview, but as we get closer to Texas next week, as we get closer to Dover after Talladega, Hendrick, Toyota, I want to play those guys. I want to play the guys in those teams that aren't being played uh, right now that people are either, either biased to or not interested in or whatever. You know, we look recently and we see uh, Chris Busher, 86. I'd much rather play him at that price here. We've seen Redick um, struggle, couldn't get anything done at Richmond. And when we look at his two Martinsville races, nothing to really, you know, scream about. I understand he had his first, you know, the first race last year, had the seventh best car. But past that, not really seeing anything that's making me want to charge at him and stuff. Same thing with Chastain. Uh very much a, a price uh, slash projection based opinion on him once we get the uh, the starting grid and stuff. Kyle Bush, I mean, just Kyle Bush at eighty one hundred dollars, like that's you know, like notice notice who we're getting that's like a cheap, especially like if we're paying up, just just looking at the salary, you can only afford realistically how this race how these races have been going as we the optimal has has been basically two dominated lineups recently, um, or three if they're like mispriced and stuff. The strategy that I usually do is try and just jam as many lap leaders as possible. Um, so typically I'm chasing three, and if I miss one, well, at least I have two others that will carry me. But, like, when we're looking at races like this, like, this is a real situation. Depending on where people start and what the, uh, the grid ends up being, there's a realistic chance that you'll need one of the expensive guys and you can build very balanced lineups with the people in this range here. Even from Christopher Bell down, I mean, I yet again, that's why preview and like looking at salary and stuff is kind of useless. It's Wednesday. Uh, we need projections to justify whether these salaries matter or not and how the builds break down. But like, who, look at the people we got in the AK range here, man. Very, very interesting. Uh, we got Bubba Wallace, who yet again, Picker just doesn't want to win a race. Uh, unfortunate end to his day at Richmond. Uh, but discounted $7,700. Um, if you remember another driver uh, with the last name Wallace, um, not talking Rusty, uh, this guy who just disappeared off the face of the earth. Don't know what happened to him, but this guy called Darrell Wallace Jr. Uh, used to be pretty decent at Martinsville in the other series. So, like, I, I don't know. Bubba Wallace, Darrell Wallace, they might be the same person, man. Have you noticed they're not, they, they haven't been in the same room together? That's kind of sus. Bubba Wallace, seventy-seven hundred dollars. Uh, Chase Briscoe, which so this has also been interesting. We have seen the Stuart Haas guys be horrific qualifiers, horrific qualifiers, and they have been just racking up place dif place differential. Um, yet again, now that they've done it multiple times, like you look at Briscoe starting thirty-second uh, at Richmond last weekend, finishing eighteenth. Sure, it's a road course, whatever. But he started 32nd at Coda. Uh, and we look at, like, those two instances where he's starting in the back. We look at Ryan Priest starting in the back of the field. And he has started 25th at Bristol, dropped 14th. Uh, 36th at Las Vegas, dropped 23rd. Um, yes, he has the 27th uh, start, 20 finish, 23rd finish, 23rd finishing position at Phoenix. Um, but we have seen, so like gaining place differential spots and improving the car on the run, regardless of what the practice has been, these guys have made incredible adjustments in these races. We look at Barry specifically who, you know, like, <laughs> it's like making people mad. Just Barry fucking sucks too. <laughs> but like the amount of, of like skill that these guys have shown the team and these guys have, have shown at adjusting the car on long run Barry started 26 at Las Vegas, finishes 20th. 36 at Phoenix, finishes 26th. You know, I understand that's 30 points. He was at 61 for 
for Las Vegas. 72 at, at Phoenix isn't going to do a darn thing when they're scoring 26 points. But, you know, starting 30th last weekend at Richmond, finishing 11th, like all the Stuart Haas guys have shown the ability to gain positions, make the car better on in the actual race. Like Briscoe, Barry, with them mid-sevens, you know, that is, um, we're looking right at like, you know, mid to low, you know, like mid to high 30s uh, to be scoring 5x. These are guys that I have been more and more paying attention to how they've been racing. I've been more and more open to paying the 7k that these guys have been demanding, you know, the, the Stuart Haas guys as place differential in these races because they have shown the ability to score pretty much near uh, 5x when they are starting towards the back of the field. And so if we run into a situation to where we see some Stuart Haas guys starting in the back of the field in the 30s at this race, even at other races and intermediate tracks, like, yes, the only way you don't want to play them is if they start pushing, like, the 8k range. But here at the 7k range right now, like, these guys are very, very much in play. So Briscoe, Barry, Priest, all in the 7k range. Actually, Gregson as well. These four guys are pretty much in my opinions, lock for 5x returns if they are starting outside of the top uh, 25. Swore is at 67. Um, sucks. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, especially when you're looking at the guys priced around them and what how they've been able to either pay off their price tag and stuff like that. Um, like a Dylan, who has just been abysmal. Yet again, got wrecked early at Phoenix, but I can't imagine he was any he was going to be anywhere better than excuse me, this type of average. When we're looking at Jones, unfortunate for sure of just how they've been running. Excuse me. Nemechek finishes very well late in the race last weekend, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, he doesn't. He finished 25th. Who the fuck was I thinking of? I may have been thinking of Jones. I think Jones gained a ton of positions late in the race. Yeah, he finishes 14th, whereas Jones last week, yet again, late race restart, um, and how things are really happening or really changing in that um, race. Basically, 23rd best driver all day from Jones ends up finishing 14th. Um, Sindrick has been pretty abysmal, pretty disappointing um, in this range. McDowell, yet again, who got trapped a lap down last weekend or last week, uh, which is why, like, statistically, that was his worst. Uh, race based on what I look at. We very much saw him line up right in the middle of this situation here. Same thing at like $6,300. Todd Gilwin starts up front, basically has this good of a car. I mean, McDowell, Gilwin, the 7K range for place differential. These guys are off ramp. These guys in the back of the field, we're, we're seeing that these guys are pretty much worth uh, that price range, and, and we don't really have to go a lot of different directions. We're seeing that Stenhouse is making a pretty – Big decrease down with the JDT, whatever the hell they're called, Doherty Racing. We're seeing them take a pretty significant stance down um, until we start seeing them start showing speed and stuff. It's going to be very hard to trust uh, Stenhouse wherever they're starting. Host of our... Just going to have to see from... Um, just going to have to see where they're at. Like the Joy, the Spire guys have been horrific at short tracks. Um so, like, yet again, when people ask me, How, what do you think Zane Smith's going to do? I have to just base it off of what LaJoy and what uh, um, Hosevar have been doing as well. <clears throat> so if these guys, like, if Hosevar, LaJoy, if this entire Spire organization does anything, I'm certainly probably not going to be on it. Uh, and that'll probably take me by surprise. We're seeing the Rick Ware cars, like, not be the worst car, which, yet again, like, you know, I know we just had Greg Golden get arrested. Um, you know, shout out to the OG Rick Ware fans out there. But like, dude, Haley, Haley, this is this is pretty this is pretty significant, man. I mean, Rick Ware used to be the slowest guys on the track. This is uh, now fifty five. That's a bit expensive. But we're seeing that, like, I mean, we're seeing some wild stuff. You know, MBM is back to being where they should be. The the first ranked car start at five thousand. That is a tough, tough buy. Uh, he really should have been like forty eight, forty two. Uh, I don't think he can really be in contention here. Grala, Grala's been showing speed. Hemrick is is is, uh, is pretty horrific. Um, 
But anyway, I mean, we can kind of see as, as we go along. The, the main contenders for this week to lead laps, in my opinion, would be, uh, yet again, very much second verse, same as the first. Joe Gibbs guys up top, uh, and then the Hendrick guys competing with them. Uh, we're going to have to see exactly what the Penske guys are going to bring uh, through qualifying and practice to have an opinion on them. Uh, and that that's really it for the Cup Series. Let's move on to the Xfinity Series real, really, really very fast. Um, we're just going to just move this off. It'll just be me talking. Um, here, so as we look at Xfinity and where they're at, when we look back at the previous years of, you know, we look back at how dominant uh, Joe Gibbs had been at Richmond uh, last week. We have seen in the past that following the Richmond domination and even the lack thereof of when, you know, Nemechek and Sandy Smith are on a lap down, those guys were still the fastest following that week at Martinsville, or the following week at Martinsville. And so when you look at who was fast last weekend and who was fa- who's going to be fast this weekend, it is going to be Eric Amarola. It is going to be Chandler Smith as your primary guys who will, I would imagine are going to compete for the race lead. Um, I think it's going to be very argue to, or very hard to argue that probably third, fourth, and fifth in you know the expected you know speed that these guys are going to have would probably be Allgaier, um, Cole Custer, and really past that, like we're, I just want to see what they're doing in practice and where these guys are qualifying and where the pit stalls are uh, to really shake up the the top of the field here. Um, we have seen chaos in the past at this race. Uh, even for these bottom two series between the Xfinity series and the truck series. And so when you look at, you know, the 40 guys in this race qualifying for 38 spots, we're going to send two guys home. So thank God that's like, we're hopefully getting rid of these, these bumps who shouldn't even be here. Um, and we look at the amount of carnage that can happen that we have seen at these races. Um, I am much more likely to lean towards place differential in this race and or, and or, guys who are affordable that you can fit in with Allgaier, with Allgaier, with, uh, or just, with Justin Allgaier, with Chandler Smith, with Eric Amarola, that are going to be um, maintain a track position that is probably inside the top eight, uh, because that at least keep them probably away from the chaos that's going to happen in the teens and in the 20s this weekend. When we're looking at that, just entering really fast, or looking at it really fast, um, where these guys are falling in line. Austin Hill, 92. Jesse Love, 94. Riley Herbst, 9,000. Would probably be the people that I want to get in with my Chandler Smith, Eric Amarola uh, lineups. When you build that way, you're left with 6,300 on average. Uh, the rest of that is going to be dependent on who gets removed. Like if we, lo- if we lose AO, if we lose Cram, uh, you know, then we're losing the bottom or the, the very bottom of the salaries and stuff. But that that's mainly how I want to approach this race is probably, and again, unless I see something crazy, two of Chandler Smith, Allgaier, and Alma Rolla, possibly Cole Custer, uh, but two of the guys in the in the high 10K range, and then one guy in the $9,000 range, which would most likely be Austin Hill, uh, 10 seconds to love Jesse Love, or Riley Herbst, or even Carson Quaffel. Um, in the 85. Yeah, what do you think of Carson? Qua- Same thing as we did last weekend with Josh Berry. Okay, when you look at Carson Quaffle, just imagine Brandon Jones in this car. Multiply that uh, experience, talent, uh, upside, whatever the fuck you want to call it, by like 1.15, and that's what Carson Quaffle is. Um, no reason to even continue past that. Good driver. No reason to go overweight on him just because. You know, Bubba Pollard hopped in and smashed last weekend, but he qualified for it. Like, it doesn't even matter. That, that's where Carson Quaffle is. Um, really past that, I want to see specifically what happens in qualifying and, and practice for this Martinsville race for the Xfinity Series just because we've seen so much chaos in this race. Like, when we look back at the last few, I mean, we can do that. We can certainly talk about the, the last few um, Xfinity Series races just to highlight the chaos, rather. Uh, and kind of why I'm not really talking about a lot of this stuff. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Um, let's just look at the last four races here and look at the amount of green flag laps, or rather green flag runs we're getting. Uh, final race in 2023. I don't like how they do this. Let's let's move this. So like First race, 2023, race eight. We look at the amount of guys who are DNFs. So we're probably going to have 
actually, we won't even say how many we're going to have. We're going to look at each individual race and see what happens. But we got a lot of crashes. Average green flag run of 16.8 laps. Third of the co- third of the race ran under yellow. Having even looked at who's been leading whatever the heck is going on here. Absolute clusterfuck in this race. Uh, more than nearly 40% of the race ran under yellow. Average run of 10 laps. Okay, we move into last year's events. The spring race. Not as much DNF percentage, but oh boy, that just that just means more guys were able to keep running, less guys are taken out, but uh, nearly identical, you know, forty percent uh, under yellow, basically ten laps green is is what we're seeing here. The final race last year, uh, yet again, not as many DNFs. So just looking at this, you could be like, okay, cool. Outside of the big boy DNF race here. Uh, we're looking probably right at like you know anywhere from six to eight DNFs in this race, give or take. But uh, we are looking at uh, at least a third of this race being ran under yellow. Uh, not a lot of green flag runs, or certainly not a long run, especially when we start looking at the amount of laps. The longest run in this race was 36. Uh, we look at the longest run in this race here was 35. The longest run in this race was 32. Longest run in this race was 37. And so no reason to even bother projecting a, a run that's longer than 40 laps. When we're looking at who was fast in these races, you know, we see Joe Gibbs coming off uh, really pissed off performance of what they did at, at Richmond the, the week before this. Uh, finished first and second. We look at this race here and who led laps. Uh, we have, hey, Joe Gibbs showing up. Hey, we have Joe Gibbs showing up. Uh, Austin Hill. Where two big lap leaders were the Joe Gibbs boys. We look at the two races last year and the teams that were killing the field was good old, hey, it was uh, Joe Gibbs, uh, Joe Gibbs, uh, and Noah, so Junior Motorsports. And then the final race last year was, or the final race in 2022. I did this backwards, actually. Oops, this was last year. My bad. Uh, and then the races in 2022, uh, Joe Gibbs uh, and Junior Motorsports. And uh, Joe Gibbs again, and Junior Motorsports. So it's literally those two teams fighting for the leads here, fighting for the lead here. Uh, it's just going to all depend on you know what those guys can do. That'll depend. That'll determine who we're chasing up top, and then you know due to the qualifying and and starting positions and everything. That's how we're going to determine who we want to chase at the bottom. Like I want to wait until we have the grid and, and projections start looking at uh, things of that nature. I guess let's go ahead and just look at the truck series. Uh, we're not going to really see anything too shocking here. Uh, we're going to want to tr- we're going to want to chase uh, Tricon. We're going to want to chase um, or prioritize. You know, it's the same fuck. It's the same fucking people each week, yo. Like, we want to play Tricon. We want to play Nicholas Sanchez. Uh, we're going to want to chase McAnally. Like, holy shit, that is like seven to eight cars. That's the majority of your top ten guys. Like. That's it. That's why I like, let's just wait for the starting grid. And uh, that's how we can determine who we want to chase. Like, I like Christian Eckes. I like Nicholas Sanchez. I like um, Corey Heim. Those are my favorites entering this race. Like, that, that brother, man, I mean, that that's mainly it. I don't know if I remember. I forgot if I open these or not, but we're just going to open them again. Looking at the last three races. Uh, let's go ahead. Let me remember. So most recent, second reason. So three years ago, we look at this race here. Good, good lord, man. Good lord. That's rough to look at. A lot of guys still running though. But holy god, that's rough to look at. Two years ago, we look at this race here. Whoa, man. Third of the race. <laughs> like, bro, that is that's nuts. Uh, last year's race. Are you guys seeing this? You guys seeing that? You guys seeing this? You guys... Brother, man, we got 50.8% of this race ran under yellow. Are you seeing this, my guys? Are you seeing this? Now, this had less yellows, rather. But a lot of this was, uh, you know, due to the rain, which I, I believe this ended because of the, uh, because of the, the rain last year. But still, man, that's crazy. That's nuts. Um, so past that, that's where we're at. We're going to have to, I want to see where everybody lines up. 
uh, based on starting grid and practice speed and everything like that. So we can go ahead and, and determine how we want projections to look and everything like that. I do believe we have our favorite truck series driver back. Now, I, I'm not going to speak about Steven too much because yet again, his mom tweeted at me. I have nothing more to say. I There's like truly no reason for me to like talk shit to this man anymore because like that's what else do what else do I want as a troll like that? That's insane. But um, I would love it if I could just play Steven and he could be optimal. That'd be the funniest fucking thing ever. That'd be awesome. Um, I guess we'll, we'll end it um, with this being quite funny. Um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and end the uh, the race with, with this that happened earlier last week. Bro, we got these two morons colliding into each other. Like, dude, NASCAR Twitter is incredible. Like, Brett Griffin called him a dipshit. Like, that, that's incredible because Brett Griffin is also a fucking idiot. Like, I love it, man. I love, I love it. Um, cannot wait to see what happens this weekend. Um, and past that, I will see you guys in the live show Friday. Don't know what time. Uh, probably an hour. Actually, I gotta see. Um, do 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 do. Let me let me look. The truck race starts seven thirty Eastern time, six thirty my time. Sheets and Bobby are live from five my time. 6 Eastern. So I... Oh, man, it's going to be close. No, 6 Eastern. Yeah. Mm, well, truck is at 2. I might... I'm either going to go live before or directly after Sheets and Bobby's live show on Friday. That'll be determined. Uh, past that, Saturday, uh, I'm going to look at probably 11 a.m. Eastern time Saturday for the live show. And then Sunday will be like 10 a.m., 10, 15 a.m., um, Eastern time for the uh, Cup Series live show. Uh, past that, if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and tweet at me or DM me and stuff. Or if you're in the Discord, uh, or if you're not in the Discord and you would like some one-on-one -on -one time with me, as I as I do with some people, like especially right now because I got nothing going on like on Monday and Tuesday. So like if anybody wants me to go over their stuff or talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, things of that nature, feel free to reach out and I will happily do that. Um, if you want to join us and support me, support all the hard work here at True DFS. Join the link below. Um, I believe that's mainly it. I'll see you guys on the live shows this weekend. So uh, peace out. And we'll just, uh, we'll see what this man does, man. Uh, you know, realistically, I know I'm about to stand it. I was like, man, what would the PR disaster be if I was like, if Steven Rex, I'll give out merch. <laughs> but like, I got merch to give out. But I was like, God, that'd be cool. Or like, you know, project what lap Steven goes a lap down. And maybe I can give like a month free, like, you know, I was thinking of all that earlier in the week, and I was like, I probably shouldn't do that. That'd probably be bad PR. But uh, you you can clearly see what what avenue I'm on. If we can if we can flip this guy over at Martinsville, that'd be incredible. See you guys later.